Hi, I'm Denise Dryden, and I'm here with Ashley Fraunheiser, again, doing our Gen X sort of deep dive esoteric explorations on a generation that has literally changed everything in the last 55 years, right? 77 is where I'm going to start because that's when the indigos came in, right? So Gen X is 65, but the indigos came in in 77. So this is when the power of the um, Gen X or the power of the indigo really started moving. And that power has a lot of momentum. It has a lot of fire. It is a dismantler. It is a shatter of um, culture, cultural institutions and ways of doing thing, things. And so, you know, Ashley and I have been not playing now on this fabulous Tuesday, the 29th, and playing with all of the different ways that fire has been showing up as a magic um, as, as, as a piece of magic that we need to be really conscious of. Right. Um, and, and where we move fire and where we are uh, conscious of it and where we're unconscious of it. So that's just sort of the intro, but you know, more than anything, what I want to do is get Ashley started talking because when she gets going, magic happens. So we're going to, this is divine magic. We are, I wanted to call this, whoops, I did it again. I just threw another fireball at somebody, something, someplace, right? Yes. Think of Britney Spears, Gen X, Sagittarius, like it just sort of weaves it all together. So whoops, I don't know what to do with fire and I keep throwing it around. Ashley. And see Britney Spears, you mentioned Britney Spears and Britney Spears is a Sagittarius too. And she's born in 19, me and Britney Spears are like the same age. So we're just going to go with that. I know. So Britney Spears, um, you know, her intention was never to end up apparently um, with, with, when she became a, you know, a pop star or whatever, she was never intending to become this person who was, you know, deeply trapped in a conservatorship. Mm -hmm. And then she never intended for the masses of people to make the free Britney movement. That was not her intention. She did not intend, but what she did was she started to, she started throwing things out there, like, you know, hitting things with, you know, her umbrella, shaving her head, her intention was basically to demonstrate that she was sick and tired of maybe the paparazzi, or maybe she was having, you know, a nervous breakdown. I think it was probably both, but the, but what ended up happening was that whole thing that happened with the free Britney movement. Now she's free and she got married and she's, I guess she's, you know, trying her best. And I think she's, I, I love Britney Spears. So um, the point is, is that when you start out with something fueled by you know, a fire. lot of fire, it's going to blow up. And though for Britney Spears, we'll move off of her, but she had kind of, I think it worked out for Britney Spears, but a lot of things along the way were really painful for Britney Spears and Britney Spears got burned a lot. So being very, very, and when you have like these amazing gifts that all these, you know, that most people have, I mean, we all have them. It just, a lot of people are more and more willing to give them, you know, some time in their awareness, like the you know, exploring the esoteric, exploring metaphysical practices, energetic technologies, meaning subtle energy. I'm not talking about like, you know, engineering. I'm talking about, you know, the work that I do and that Denise, Denise does um, with, you know, uh, metaphysical healing and things like that. I mean, I've been doing th this type of stuff since I was a child. So I, you know, have been honing it for a long time, but I did a lot of it independently, a lot of independent study, but I've, you know, been in contact with, you know, some of the most amazing teachers along the way in my uh, journey. So I do have quite a bit of experience when it comes to workings of sacred arts, magic with a K, with a C, I don't care. It's, I, I don't do stage magic. I do intentional magic. I don't do, this is not in, this is not about writing spells. This is about simply about healing and about making the world a better place for, for all of those that, that share this beautiful mother that we all live upon. So the fire element that it has a lot of momentum. And when you think of fire, you think of now, you think of in your face, moving energy and creativity, passion, spontaneity, impulsivity falls into that category. Creativity, um, magnificent, willpower, willpower. Mar, um, Aries, uh, what else? Mars. Uh, Leo, Leo, Leo Sag, um, Sag and Aries, mm -hmm. you know, think of the, the planets. We have Mars, Pluto, 
Um, and also you started the conversation with the indigo and the indigo is the color of the root of the flame. Mm -hmm. You know, the farther out you get from the flame's middle, which is where the blue is. If I put my finger on, and I don't have a candle right now and I wish I did, but if I put my finger on top of a candle, it will like right at the bulb, it will burn. If I put it in it, if I start to work with it and I work with it quickly with intention and don't you know move around too much, but just very specifically, very intentionally, mindfully, I will not get burned. If I place my finger along the side of the blue part, it, I can get myself as close if almost to touch it along the side, working with, co-creating with, not through and not haphazardly. So when using fire, and especially now, because we're in Sagittarius, today is Tuesday, November 29th. It's the numerology of the day is the magician, and it is Mars day. Tuesday is represented by the planet Mars. We're in Sagittarius in the sun. So this is a perfect day to talk about the momentum behind the fire divine or divine fire, sacred flame, um, when it comes to metaphysical and more, you know, spiritually focused healing and practices and just daily fun. Yeah. And, and, and by taking the fire, what we, what we're doing is we're, we're taking the four elements. So we have water, we have earth, we have air, and this fire is where the momentum or the action comes into our sense of being and how we create. And so what we, what we're looking at is, is there were, there were some old ways of harnessing fire and, 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 and putting it out there. And there are some chaotic, irresponsible ways of harnessing words and, and whether we call it spells, casting intentions, putting them out there and creating chaos or little flames all the way around us. What I'm noticing is that it affects our nervous system. It affects our sense of trust. It affects all of these things. So what we want to do is start to look at fire as something that can be cohesive rather than something that can be destructive. Very good. And the, the, you know, if you notice on a lot of, you know, platforms that, or any kind of episode podcast teaching YouTube video or anything that, it, that um, these days around magic or, or um, energy work, uh, the, the fun word of manifestation comes up all the time, how to manifest, 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 manifest. Well, it's a good thing if you really want to learn how to to hone your manifestation skills. I do strongly suggest that you begin with creating a nice agreement, alliance and an attunement with the element of fire, because that is the one that tends to be, uh, people think they understand fire because it's quick and they can see it, they can feel it, they know where it comes from, they know it's hot, they know it's a source of thing, but they really, they spend, people I've, I've noticed when learning and teaching people about this, they spend more time working with the other form, including spirit. So I would say water, earth, and air, and then spirit they work with, but they really don't spend enough time, I think, with fire. Fire mm -hmm. is something that really needs to have attention put to it because fire has is is intelligent, it's fast, it is, and it's also can go rogue really quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and it also you have to have a respect for the divine intelligence that fire holds. Fire is the only element that requires an additional source to exist, okay? Now, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, chemistry, okay? Water needs a container. Air is all around us. There's air and water, okay, yada, yada. But in order to see a fire, it has to be burning something else. And normally that would be earth. And if you have gas, that would be, in the air, but let's just say it needs an earth source. And guess who the earth source of subtle fire are? Oh, wow, humans. Wow, we are a source of subtle, the element of, of subtle fire or fire divine, as I call it, because when I'm talking about, um, when I say fire divine, I mean that in like the, the inner internal kind of a way, the spiritual way, not necessarily the pragmatical hands-on type of fire, but the the suggestion of fire in a subtle element form. So people learning how to, to utilize fire and start there and develop a relationship and a respect with that element in a way that kind of like when you 
remember when people learned to light matches? Mm -hmm. Like you don't just give your kid a box of matches and say, have at it. Okay. Right. Then, you know, when you can do it, what to have available, what catches fire, what to do when, because it, it, it just takes off really quick and, and kids and fire and matches were, or have always been a really big problem mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. it's responsibly. I love, I love that. It. That's a great sort of segue into responsibility. I learned that was perfect because I learned very early that in order to be able to play with fire, because I play with fire, I don't play with fire rec like nasty. I actually sit and me and fire play little, you know, fun little magical games together. Like I talk to fire, I rhyme to fire, I watch it, I weave it, I pull the things around and everything. But that's how I play with fire. But in order to get there, I, I really had to, to feel that confidence because even now to this day, like if I'm not in a, in a nice state and I try to light a match, I get a little nervous. And if I'm a little bit nervous, I don't light matches. If I get a little nervous, I don't use lighters or anything because any emotion attached with fire is going to burn. So if I'm in a good mood and I light a candle, that's what's going to burn. That positivity, that beautiful glowing light. If I'm angry, that that's what's going to go into that fire. That's what I'm creating into. If, if I'm in a pissed off mood, here we go. Light the match and I'm pissed. That's what's in that flame. So I now have that. So that agent, if you've been watched, if, if you ever take time to, to watch and study the different kind of, if you're in a different mood and you light a match, look at the match. It's amazing what it actually does. So How it responds to, to what you hold in your body. Thank you. Exactly. Yes. And knowing how to responsibly use that, making sure you have like when you're teaching a person how to light it, you know, make a campfire, you want to have a five gallon bucket of water next to you at all times. You know, you want to make sure that you also have a fire extinguisher, that you have a metal pan that, I mean, a metal lid, if you need to smother, a, you need to have all these things beforehand. Just like when we're about to set up ourselves to go and let's say, we have a lot of creativity. We're very excited about a project and we really want to launch it into the world, right? If we are not prepared with our other faculties, with mm -hmm. our emotions, with our water, with our channel, with our breath, with our, with our physical body, if we are not put together in an earthly sense, if we're not, you know, breathing all that stuff and we just go with creativity and fire, we're going to be a mess at that presentation, right? Yeah. It's not going to look good. Well, and, and think about it as far as not even a setup contained presentation. Think of how we talk to people. Think of how we throw anger and sarcasm around when, you know, when someone cuts us off on the highway, when, you know, we're, when we notice something in the coffee, in the line in the coffee store and in these little shards of fire that we sort of breathe out of our mouth and we have no responsibility for how they land and what they do. And, and that's what, you know, that's where we want to bring some consciousness into it. Cause the words plus the fire is fuel going out and then sort of the mood that you're in makes it bigger or smaller and mm -hmm. it can be very um, erratic. Mm -hmm. It can be irresponsible. It can be harmful and it can create momentum and start something going, which you didn't intend, but now it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, be for me, I've got a big fire and people are mad at me. And it's like that. Yeah, but you started it with these, this, this explosive yeah. thought exactly. pattern in words. Exactly. I'll give you a personal example of me playing with fire. And I live with a very, I live, I have two very magical children, but my youngest child is a diamond frequency child. And I, and he's also a magician and my numerologist is a magician too, but he just so happened to be in the house. And I swear to God, that's why things worked out. So I was in a mood and I was having a lot of fun. And I was like, you know what, let me go get some of my colored smoke because I love to play with that. We're going to have some colored smoke. I've been doing this a long time, folks, like not, I mean, like a really long time. I have all the paraphernalia. I've got big cauldrons. Okay. What cauldron do I pick? What cauldron do I pick to light this smoke ball off on the one that's like this big? And where do I place it on my wooden deck that needs to be it needs to be torn off. Okay. Didn't think about it at all. I like this thing. This thing goes up like nobody's business. And I'm just like, and immediately because of 
I, I was not thinking. I wasn't thinking ever do that ever have a moment when you just do something and you're not thinking and you're like, Oh my God, what have I done? But the thing is, is I learned in this moment, what I did in that moment when I was like, Holy shit, I just, I'm I'm about to let this whole house. I'm going to burn this whole fucking house down in this. I am so sorry. I did not respect this fire fire. I am so sorry. Please don't. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. And it was, and it literally went up and it like blows back down. And I was like, and that is why we, we need to respect that and don't try to compensate. Don't ever think you're bigger than what you, than the fire. Don't think you're more powerful than the fire. Cause I knew in that moment, I was like, I didn't think it through. And how many times have people been in situations where they're not thinking it through mm-hmm. ahead of time? Cause they're excited. I was so excited to light off this very beautiful, bright orange smoke ball. That's all that I had my focus on. And it went like this. And in that moment, instead of being like, oh, it's fine. I was like, oh, wow. I didn't know that was not a smart move. Very, very, I am very sorry. And I pulled it back. One of the things with, with excitement, emotions, creativity, all that stuff, it's very passion filled Mm -hmm. people. It's, I feel like people have a hard time of just being like, wait, I think I'm too much right now. I think I haven't thought this through. You can pull that back in. You can decide how much you're going to let that go, go rogue. I had to watch that thing and it literally went out and it was a miracle at my address. It really was. So I am very thankful for all of that. And it certainly humbled me, but it made me think like, this is why we think things through. This is why we prepare. This is why when we are excited and we've put a lot of time and passion into things that we think about how we really want to execute this mm-hmm. because it, I got very blessed, right? But there've been times in my life where I've done things and I haven't thought it through. And I have certainly been anything, maybe, maybe retrospectively, I was blessed, but in the moment, it certainly didn't feel like that because I have blown worlds up mine mm-hmm. over and over and over. And that's kind of how we learn to respect the power of the fire that we hold internally. That- well, and you- Catching that for yourself and you're, and you're recognizing that there's been some maturity or there's been some calming down or some levels of responsibility. I think what, what I want to just keep putting out there is what if we aren't aware that that's what we're doing? And then, mm-hmm. and then by bringing the term magic, by bringing the term conjure, by gr- bringing, bringing the term intention, by bringing the term manifest, by by being supernatural, affecting the natural flow of things, we can do that with our momentum, whether it's in a responsible way, whether it's in a hurt way, whether it's in a way of fear, whether it's in a way, way of caution, whether it's in a way of wisdom, which is any of that, once we understand what, what we hold within ourselves, can then take form and shape. Exactly. That's perfect. And this gives me a really great opportunity to share three quick ways of how to redirect yourself through Mm -hmm. a few things. Now, this is very pragmatic. Fire needs a source. It needs fuel and needs oxygen. Okay. So if you are in something and you're having a moment and you're really all in and you found yourself that you no longer think that this is really going to be able to be contained. You have to be able to contain this. Fires need to be contained because what happens when they aren't contained is they keep on going. And a lot of times things fall into them, right? That maybe we didn't intend. There's collateral, there's backfire, like, right? So we don't want to have that. So when we have something that's really passion filled for us, that we are extremely enthusiastic about, excited about, love unconditionally, okay? We want to be able to execute that rather intentionally, mindfully, and in a in a really great way, magnificent way, right? So in order to do that, we want to make sure that we are prepared. And if we go off track a little bit, what to do if that happens, okay? We can prepare, but sometimes things happen, right? Like right now, I just got reminded about what I was saying right? And how I did that was I remembered what I was going to teach you, which is three things. Okay. So the fire comes from the root, from the vital, from the the internal Kundalini, right? So that it's our root chakra energy, which is down around our, our tailbone at the base of our spine. Now I'm sure many of you men, maybe not so much, but you know how to clench your, your butt cheeks together 
women can do Kegel exercises. Okay. You know, when you get going, if you do a Kegel exercise and restrict that for just a second, and then you let it out, it helps to stabilize some of that fire from moving too quickly through your body. Great idea. I did not know this. Yes, indeed. Okay. So you want to restrict the source. Okay. Just restrict it a little bit. It's almost like snuffing it out. You're mm-hmm. trying to snuff it out. Like, wait, hold on. And you can hold your breath when you do it. And then you can let it out slowly. Okay. Because mm-hmm. that will, it's almost like. We stop the momentum for a second and it, and it, and it slows down or it's, 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 it's almost like it's flying and then it just sinks. Mm-hmm. And it actually really works. Okay. Yeah. Another okay. thing is, is be, that's kind of almost like containing it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Let's get this down a little bit. Stop fueling it. Wait, stop. Mm-hmm. And then just kind of relax into yourself and let that go down. That helps to, to contain it. Now, another way to contain it is to remove the oxygen, to remove the source. Your words are the source. Sometimes when you get going too far, far and fast, the words start flying. Okay. Pull back, breathe from the, from the back of your nostrils, which will inflate your stomach without, you can't not have it do that. And then it's hard to talk when you're concentrating on the back of your nostrils and your belly, your tongue and your mouth has to sort of hold so that those. Number three, the tongue to the roof of the mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like somebody can say something very, I'm like spitting now. Somebody can say something nasty to me. And if I am in a mood and I stick my tongue on the roof of my mouth, it helps my jaw not get prepared to bite somebody's head off. And it literally signals to my brain, I'm not in danger and I don't need to, to bite something to protect my life or the life of my bloodline let's prime primordial force within all of us human beings, right? And animals and living organisms. So if that does that actually cuts off that, it, it like cuts off the source. It like removes mm-hmm. the kindling. It doesn't get any more. It's just like, okay, you know, the chimp, like it's almost like the, the thing comes down on top of it. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's almost, it, it stops you from reaction. Mm-hmm. The action is either I want to hurt back. I want to throw a fireball back. I want to throw words. I want to posture. Everything goes in and settles and it's like, slow it down, Mm -hmm. slow Mm -hmm. down momentum, beautiful tools. Mm -hmm. No, those are great. Just to slow it down, contain it in there as easy as can be. And they make a lot of practical sense. And if you do study more into, um, you know, the, the metaphysics and, um, you know, more the esoteric stuff, the hermetics behind fire, you'll be like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because of where the Kundalini is, the Nadis and the Meridians. If you are, um, if you, and here's the other thing, sometimes we catch, you know, the, the subtle fire in the collective, right? The anger that just sometimes hits, hits a neighborhood, hits a thought, you're having a conversation then you get hit with an energetic um, blast, so to speak, of a topic that's, hugely fueled in the collective okay and human beings are the source of the human collective correct okay Okay, so let's get out of the general and say when something comes up about our politics about our medical choices about our school education choices about our bodies right now that's what's floating around Mm -hmm. thank you Denise. now where you're going to feel that to know that it's coming from the collective and not necessarily you because denise did a beautiful video on sunday which was called the predatory empath. And she was talking about, you know, how to notice these things within yourself, how to, uh, I would strongly suggest if you haven't watched that or rewatch it, the predatory empath video was excellent. Um, How to, you know, notice what is yours, what is not yours, okay? Like in a simple way, when it comes to the, the emotion of anger or frustration, agitation is a big one, Um, disgruntlement, disadvantage mint mm-hmm. uh, that trust yep where you will feel that most likely okay is in between the back of like where your 
the two muscles of your body, like your lateral muscles in the back and your, what is it? The dorsal? No, this is, yeah, your- um, You can say between, back of the heart, like below yes, the shoulders back of your, in the back of the heart. That's what I was getting. There's a hand pushing on you. The back of your heart space. You will feel, you will go like this. It's like somebody is pressing in between the back because when you are receiving it, it's hitting your source, which is where's our source for all the, the fire in our body is, is, you know, this is what generates our fuel, right? That's what gets our engine running, right? Right here, this area, it's called the heart. That's mm -hmm. our engine, so to speak, right? It's gonna yeah. hit you in the back of that and you will go and you'll get a tension in the back area. And when that does, when you get tension in the back, this part, mm -hmm. okay? Just and by me. You want to pass that along. It's kind of like it hits you and you just want to like get it out and, and direct it towards somebody. And that. And then you go like this, right? Yeah. You're like, you know what? I am so sick and tired of, little, you know, and you start, <laughs> when you notice it in the back, stop and say, mm, that wasn't mine. Okay. Throw that into the earth and really like give yourself a little, like move it out. Be like, that wasn't me send it into the earth to trillions of frequency of light. Mother earth will take care of it for you. No trouble at all. Okay. Or send it to your favorite angel, send it to whatever you want to don't mm -hmm. send it back mm -hmm. because it's one less one that got put in that to fuel it. And when it hits you, it doubles each time it hits you it doubles. So if you throw it back out, now you got four, you started with getting hit with one, you've got two, you've put out four. Okay. Yeah. That's how that works. So just throw it into the earth. When with somebody, if you're having an exchange with another person and they say something to you, we have a tendency to kind of almost like, what? What do we, excuse me? What? We, we, we protect, we, we, we cross our arms, we put our hands up, we cave our, shoulder, our shoulders in and we sort of like become concave and we absorb it. Mm -hmm. And we also sort of can go into hurt or victim or... Mm -hmm like oh they just mm -hmm. said yeah mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. our face kind of goes like this so take your take your your eyes when that happens and just put them straight up into the air and you'll have no choice but to breathe out because every time you roll your eyes you breathe out I don't know why it just happens <laughs> mm -hmm. yes and it if it reverberates around a little bit, be like, I got I need a minute to respond to this because I'm containing it first because that hit me hard. And that was a blast. That was like, you know, that was a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Hold on a second mm -hmm. and just let it, let it settle a little bit. Respect that it's a fireball. Don't see it as somebody trying to hurt you. See it as something that's burning you. Pay attention to how you feel instead of what they just did. Because I can guarantee you, if you got hit with a, with, with a, like a burning stick, you are only worrying for that moment. You're only attending, not worrying, attending to, ouch, ouch, ouch. You're not thinking why they did that. You're attending to the physical pain that it has caused, or you're trying to get out of the way of it. Mm -hmm. Please try to be mindful to do the same thing with an emotional exchange or a verbal exchange. Just take a second, check with yourself first. Be like, oh my gosh, that hurt. Like, let them know that hurt. That's how we create agreements with, with elemental beings. We can do a whole nother thing on elemental beings because I really, really think that that would be I super fun. That. I would love to, to, to cover more on that, yes. I do too. But when you get hit with the emotion, let them know, ow, that really hurt. Like, that actually really hurt. You mm -hmm. realize that, that came hard. Or, like, I didn't realize it was like this. Instead of being a victim, you just survived a big hit. You just defeated a big hit that you got hit with. And if you go home and you keep that and you were, you know, it's like a lot here. And then we're out to Nam with whatever, what is, whatever that means, really big, really <laughs> big. And we're, it then eats and burns us up inside. Let them know that they have hurt your feelings and that not, not, yes, they have burned your central nervous system. They've hit you hard and that really hurt. Like it's, for example, you know, I've had many things said to me in my life, um, but had I known maybe at the age of 
16 or so, if somebody said something to me Mm -hmm. like, wow, that was really big. That actually really hurt my feelings instead of being that fucking bitch. Like she is such a bitch and talk behind her back. Like I fucking hate her, all this stuff. What was I doing? I was just, uh, just throwing it out left and right, like with no intention of having it hit me back. But what it was doing, it was creating its momentum and it was traveling wherever it was going to go. And I was going to as intended, as intended, because I, what I want to do is, is, is pull this back into the beauty of the Gen X wisdom at this point, because you and I can, we, we can talk for two hours on this. And I want to keep this, this, this succinct for today, because what I want to do is say born in 65 to 1980 you know, how many decades have we been reacting? Have we been, you fucking bitch, you did this, you did that clearing away. What happens now is, is, is when you're in your forties, you kind of go, there might be another way of doing this. I don't know if I want to yet, but when you get to your fifties, you're like, I think I could do it, do it differently. And then when you get to your sixties, you're like, I don't really care what you guys do. This is what I need to do for me. And so as we are coming down in the funneling from this anger, this fire, this momentum, that's been so magnificently harnessed. Now we're coming into bringing it into wisdom, which is how I choose to use it, how I choose to react, how I choose to own it and, and, and implement it with sovereignty, with authenticity, with wisdom, with responsibility, with what are I have balance and safety that these are all the things that that we start to to get wise with and that's where we're at right now which is fire is phenomenal tool let's use it wisely as we sort of go towards what kind of future do we want to build do we want to keep burning down everything or do we want to start tampering you know think of temperance right tempering the fire down so that we know how big it's going to be and then start to allow something to create without that much fire forcing it mm-hmm. or a well-tended fire a rat. right like absolutely and these are the things that teaching people early on had I known these things early had I put together the magical you know um connections had I connected these links together earlier I think well I wouldn't have the job that I do and I wouldn't do it as well as I do because that's like my whole resume, resume is all my life, whatever the fuck I did. But um, the working with young people, with children, explaining to them that connection, we are actually built to do all this. We are designed to be able to do all this, like pull yourself in, cut off that supply of receive of, of the momentum. And okay. That's becoming attuned with fire. That's learning how to in, tune your internal fire. When I'm talking about your internal fire, when I'm not talking about the external, this is about the interpersonal communicative exchanges and the emotional intensity because a thought is an ant, an emotion is an elephant, okay? Mm -hmm. So emotion, that's the fire, that's okay, or not, you know, it's still big. It's going to always supersede thought and it will direct the thought, the emotion behind it. Okay. That's the fire. That's the fuel. That's the thing that gets the car running. Okay. Like you need that's the momentum have- that we need. It's the way, okay. and, 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 and I have to play with this card. This is so good. I love this card. This is the two of um, wands. This is the two of fire within the thought deck and it's called dominion, which I loved. And so when this came up, when I was in mystery school, we played with it a lot. And it just so happened that it came out at the same time as Wonder Woman, the new version of Wonder Woman. And we sort of realized, you know, wait a minute, you harness it, you bring your thoughts together, your intentions, you know, whether it's a job, whether it's, you know, I need someone to stop doing something, whether it is a manifestation and you're like, boom, boom, Boom. And you send the momentum towards that. And it's like a funnel. And so this is the most beautiful way to take fire and, and hold it responsibly and then funnel it and, 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 and send it where you need it to in, in such a magnificent. But the cope, it's, it's using both your, this hemisphere, this hemisphere. And when you cross the two, they meet and they have that like really nice you do with this what you intend 
Yes. Like you are in a place to do that. You have strength coming from it's tempered or it's, you know, you'll normally put your dominant hand on the inside, your right hand, if your right hand will go on the inside of your ex. So mm -hmm. that this is yeah. the logic, right? I mean, this is the reception, but this is the, this is the emotion and this is the logic. So you want to have a little bit of, it's like the, it's like a nice buffer either way. Your sending hand is tempered a little bit by the receptive hand too. It's mm -hmm. you don't do your cross with your non-dominant hand on the front, like behind. You put your right, right? Yeah. Is your right hand on the bottom? I always put my right in the inside. That's so interesting. Yes, you do. And then and then holding that, which is I'm gonna hold this. If you I'm hold this, it feels incredible. Yeah. It's very comfortable. It's a sovereign tool that I've learned, which is no, mm -mm, I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna hold this. I'm not gonna let this in. And sometimes when I need to push back, I just do this. And sometimes I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's close like, off. let this happen. And what doesn't end up closing off, what actually ends up being able to flow through the source that it comes out of, which is our arms from our heart space, especially our high heart. This doesn't close our heart down. Mm -mm. We don't do this. You're mm -hmm. like this. And if you need a second to just kind of almost press into that with your intention, put your hands out and press in and what you would like to send out, you know, to somebody else, it's like, yeah, you're going to have a lot more control of that and you're going to feel it and it's going to come out really nicely. And so then when you relax your hands, you're ready to, mm -hmm. to really engage in that. That's an excellent card. That's a really great spin on the dominion card, the two of the two of wands. I bet you nobody did that before. It, I, it I was, just turned into my one of my favorite cards in the deck. When I get this, I know that it's up to me to to understand how powerful I am with mm -hmm. creating yeah. what I don't want and creating what I want. And I'm so, harnessing it. Exactly. <laughs> I'm co-creating in agreement with. I know what I'm dealing with. I'm being very mindful, attentive, aware and compassionate with myself because I know it can burn and I, my skin burns and my feelings burn. Like I'm trying and other people do too. And the magic of fire. Awesome. And the of fire. So if this is something that you have enjoyed, like, and subscribe on this because Ashley and I just get together. We try to do this once a week, but sometimes between, um, she has younger kids. It's always my fault. It's, it's always not fault. always your fault. Uh, Thanksgiving came along, you know, um, uh, it, sometimes we do it in the morning. Sometimes we do it at night. We try to move it around. However, our intention is to come to you at least once a week, once every 10 days and say, Hey, let's explore this, this next thing about this magnificent generation of change that we're going through and, 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 and looking at it from different perspectives. So thank you so much, Ashley, and you. all of you who've been watching for sticking with us throughout this um, whole, whole discussion. Thank you. Thanks.